these print expenses for? It's very technical as well. It takes a lot of focus, accuracy, and precision to find that right vein and shoot up that heroin. <laughs> <laughs> Almost important to operate that one night stand. I don't like it. So after a one night stand, I get this guilty feeling inside. And I'm like, damn, there's an victim of AIDS. <laughs> 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 I went out one night with my mate, right? He confided to me. He's like, bro, I think I hate my life. And I told him that I felt his pain, and that was in the same boat as him. He was like, oh, really? They got through the same problem as your partner. I'm, not, I'm like, nah, mate. I just hate your wife, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, me and boys went out one night drinking, and we caught a cab ride, right? and we thought it would be a good idea to do a runner. And keep my little wasted, right? So the cab driver put us over the destination and we legged it. I was trying to run, I turned around, and to my surprise, the cab driver didn't chase after me. He just looked at me and went, like, What the fuck are you doing here? Yeah? Next day I woke up a hangover and so I checked my bank account. And I realized I spent 25 bucks on a Uber ride. <laughs> <laughs> so we did run a on a Uber ride that I paid for. <laughs> Do you guys know I'm a natural salesman? I'm so good at sales, right, that I once stole my neighbor's dog. You know what I did? I sold it back to him. Just <laughs> like, thanks, Vip. Those spring rolls were delicious. Excuse me, my dog's part of a paper boodle. Nothing. And one day I took my dog to the dog park. At the store pub, right, I saw this massive German Shepherd that pounced into a chihuahua and started hugging him. And all the kids at the dog park started crying screaming. I thought to myself, damn, this is the place where I want to be. So I zipped and took up a dog costume and left the park. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen an animal documentary by Dan Hathaway? Yeah? Do you know Vietnam would love to watch that show? The set of airing on National Geographic, we are in Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> and one of you now watching one of his documentaries, and he said in English, Birds are the most accomplished aeronauts the world has ever seen. They can fly high and low, at great speed and very slowly, and with always such precision and control. But when I read the subtitles, he said, To prepare this dish, you must first cut the meat in half, <laughs> and then marinate the meat. <laughs> um, do you guys wonder if an Asian restaurant is any good? My advice to you is not to go through Google reviews and accurate. All you got to do is follow these four simple rules. The first rule is that an Asian restaurant has to be dungeon. The second rule has to fall below the health and safety standards. The third rule, there has to be more Asians to what? <laughs> And the fourth and final rule is that the food service has to be shit. <laughs> you tick all those four boxes, you've got to sell an authentic Asian restaurant. <laughs> okay, let's speak about food. I've got a mate that can only eat gluten free food. <laughs> His name is Jeffrey. He's <laughs> actually in the crowd, where are you, Jeffrey? <laughs> He's not actually blue intolerant, he's one of those massive attention seekers. <laughs> <laughs> so one night I made him on Sufi Marinara and I assured him that the pasta was gluten free. Of course it. <laughs> but I told him it was. So he ate the pasta and it was fine the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> Next day though, she had to in blood. <laughs> I was like, fuck, maybe he's a mine. <laughs> Another thing is, I never confessed to him that the pasta wasn't gluten free. So now he also thinks he has a seafood allergy. <laughs> Thanks for that material, Jeff. <laughs> um, I feel like Aussies think they try to be so much cultural, right? You can come off offensive. But I've got this uh, non Aussie, uh, non Asian mate, right? Trying to lecture me where the best Vietnamese food joint is in Adelaide. It's like, bro, you've got to try this authentic Vietnamese dog rolls. He explained to me it has nice crispy bread, nice juicy pork wrappings. Pickle carrot, cucumber. I was like, wow, that doesn't sound too bad, right? And he was like, olives. I was like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Avocado. 
and drizzle mayonnaise. Come on, dudes. I'm pretty sure it didn't be spooge on your phone, too. It's Subway. <laughs> Same mate invited me over for dinner, served me a bowl of beef meal soup. It's actually quite delicious. I was offended. Not because he served me my traditional dish, but personally he sat me down on the kitchen bench, served me the bowl, while all his family friends sat on the dinner table in pieces. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I um, know a white couple that recently adopted a Chinese baby. But they didn't want to baby off again where he came from, so they did the right thing. We gave baby a Chinese name, which is Lil Wake. <laughs> we celebrated New Year's Year together, and it also took a family photo dressed in traditional Chinese gown. The fucked up thing about this is that the baby's even Chinese. It's <laughs> hot. <laughs> see a lot of celebrities adopting Asian babies. People call it publicity stunt, but I disagree. I call it long term investment. It's like playing blue chips in the share market. <laughs> and statistically speaking, in a Western society, Asians generally earn more than any other race. <laughs> <laughs> they also won't press for all, unlike some people, unless you look after them. <laughs> and not send them to nursing homes when they're only 40 years old. <laughs> so I adopted a pet dog, like, you know, a doodle, and she cost me $6,000. That's crazy, right? No one's crazy than that. My dog costs three times more than adopting a local Aussie kid. <laughs> That's actually true, look it up. <laughs> but I feel like adoption should be free because once you put money into it, it becomes a business transaction. So imagine walking to adoption clinic and the staff is like, Welcome to adoption store. Over here, but if this one, $2,000 each, buy two, get second one half price. <laughs> you really a tight budget, you can browse through the teenager section. It's 5% off. <laughs> um, back in the day, I used to hang out with the Aussies. The one day, one of my Aussie mate, Wayne, said to me, You know what, You're pretty cool for an Asian. I was like, What do you mean, mate? He's like, You know, you're Asian, but you're not Asian, Asian. You're like one of us. And guys, never in my life have I ever felt so privileged and oppressed at the same time. <laughs> Back in the day, white girls wouldn't date me. They would see ages as being nerdy and weak. But now, nowadays, a lot of white girls would date Asian guys. Because white girls know that the date Asian guy, either them to an accountant, an engineer, a doctor, or a drug dealer. <laughs> Speak up, drugs, I used to be a man. Australian. 
One disadvantage when I used to fly from Vietnam back to Australia, I get stopped by border security. They make me fill out these declaration forms, right? They pull me aside, open my luggage, pull out the dried fish, <laughs> pull out the pickled onions, pull out the battery pack, and push the suitcase back to me. And that, guys, is how smoking cocaine. <laughs> So, talking talk about Vietnam, last time I went to Vietnam, I visited my family. Um, they live four hours away from St. Gong, a rural countryside of Vietnam. And first day I was set there, right, we were drinking outside. And an hour and a half after our drinking session, I need to take a shit. But keep in mind, we're in countryside Vietnam. So I left the group, found the bush, and took a shit, right? And during my shit, my cousin came up to me. I said, what do you want, cuz? Because like, you do know that we have um, a toilet in our house, right? <laughs> I was embarrassed because I was very ignorant of the current Vietnamese lifestyle. Anyways, I finished taking shit, went back to the group, started drinking again. And two hours into a drinking session, I need to take another shit. But this time I knew. So I walked into the house, into the toilet, closed the door, and took a shit. And during my shit, I heard a knock on the door. I was like, who is it? And the voice said, it's your cousin Tuan. So what do you want, Tuan? I'm taking shit. So yeah, I know, mate, but you're taking shit at the wrong house. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, born and raised in a country that gave us a lot of opportunity, job prospect, and freedom. As a 29 year old, I want to give back to our country, right? So I actually recently applied to join the army. Yeah. I recently applied to join the Chinese Communist Army. <laughs> <laughs> in last year, um, you see the Australian population decreasing. And the reason behind it is not because of COVID, but it's actually because if anyone bitch about China, they mysteriously disappear. <laughs> and there's two reasons why guys didn't laugh at that joke. His first reason is that the joke isn't that funny. <laughs> and second reason, you guys are too scared to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the COVID pandemic is a bad time of life. Um, but you think hard into it, there's some positivity in it. For example, you know, if you're born an introvert, you can make excuses not to see people. Or you're born ugly, no one can tell if you've got a mask on. <laughs> and if you're an L player, all you've got to do is find up those PCR test sites and build up your house straight away. <laughs> um, people say it's very hard to tell the difference between a Chinese and a Vietnamese. I disagree. In fact, I think it's very easy to tell the difference between a Chinese and a Vietnamese. All you gotta do is walk up to the car and see what class Mercedes are driving. <laughs> There's a C class, a Vietnamese. There's an S class, a Chinese. And there's an E class, a Singaporean. And if you didn't get that joke, that means you've got no money. <laughs> um, you can also. You can also spot what kind of Asian they are by where they hang out. So you go down to Virginia, you see an Asian there, they're most likely going to be Vietnamese. Or you see an Asian Chinatown, they're most likely going to be Chinese. And you go to the crazy halls or the palace, <laughs> and you spot an Asian in there, I guarantee you 100% they're Filipino. <laughs> Japanese porn. <laughs> <laughs> the only porn I'm watching now is midget porn. I really love myself. <laughs> when I was single, I used to be a massive womanizer. <laughs> There's one day I actually slept with four different people. The first girl I slept with had multiple personality disorder. <laughs> So when I sex with her, four characters came out. <laughs> which is Claudia, Maggie, 
Christina, and Johnny. <laughs> it was a really weird experience for me, because I only had fun when Johnny came out. <laughs> so now I'm married to a woman. Um, <laughs> but the sixth my wife can be quite boring, quite mundane. Because the, the thing we do is, I don't know, it's just a missionary, it's quite routine. <laughs> so one day I suggested to spice things up, no, let's try some, you know, come in mouth action. <laughs> and she actually agreed to it, but with one condition, though I drink pineapple juice. So I drank pineapple juice and we did the deed. And guys, to be honest with you guys, right, I didn't enjoy it. It's not my cup of tea. It's safe to say it's the first and last time they will ever come in my own mouth. <laughs> <laughs> this is a true story. Me and my wife tried spicing up last month. We actually had the first threesome. She <laughs> <laughs> actually had two dicks inside at the same time. <laughs> I go around trying to find her, or charades when she's sitting there guessing who I am. As I got older though, I realised she wasn't playing. She actually had dementia. <laughs> I felt like I just lost the crowd there. <laughs> um, leaving my grandma can be quite frustrating. She lost a complaint. She's like, why are you successful? Why don't you have a house? Why don't you have a kid? You know, why don't you have a good job? The kid might just complain this to me when I was only 14 years old. <laughs> And you know, as people grow older, the person has to start to change, right? But only recently she stopped complaining. That's because she just passed away. <laughs> I feel like, you know. <laughs> I'll leave you guys in this. You guys notice that in Australia, you don't find many Asian kids with Down syndrome? <laughs> because it's very hard to spot one, since all Asian look alike. <laughs> It's also very hard for a doctor to diagnose an Asian kid with Down syndrome. Because an Asian kid with Down syndrome will still have a higher IQ than the average Australian. 